Victory fans, welcome back to Victory TV presented by Canva. I'm your host, Jake Barkadesh, and I'm joined as always by Melbourne Victory women's captain, Kayla Morrison. Kayla, another bumper show today. Absolutely pumped. I have just missed you. This last week has <laughs> so not week been the hurt. same. The week off hurt. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I felt like I needed to call you, face from you <laughs> last Thursday. But no, I'm really excited for the week and for even tonight's show. And competing for some silverware, which Oof. we love. Yes, absolutely. We're going to get stuck into that. Well, let's get stuck into it. As I said, we preview the big A-League women's grand final against Sydney FC as we chat to gun forward Melina Ayres. We reflect on Broxy's 350th A-League men's match for the club last night after the draw with Western United. And we catch up with one of the Victory Women's Legend 2014 Championship winner, Jolgen Janet Cyrus, and much, much more. Another big one, Kayla. It is a massive show tonight. It should be really fun. Tonight's show will be great. Hopefully, the women and the men both can pull out three points this weekend. Fingers crossed. Let's do it. Well, it was a spirited point at home as we took on Western United last night. And let's take a look back at the highlights from Amy Park as 10's Robbie Thompson takes you through the action. Very even in this first half as Kelleva again with the punch, driven back in. Deflected or Rennie could hit with Brimmer. Miranda's made the run to the back post. Oh, but there's not enough angle. Oh, terrible. Headed back across the base from Tomoki Imai. And again from Rojas, saved by Young. He scored in the derby a week after he'd scored against Adelaide. So he scored in the two biggest games for victory. Oh, was the flick on and the header. Nikolai Topol Stanley nods it into the back of the net. Davidson with Brimmer trying to curl it. We don't have eight clean sheets for nothing. Jamie Young, it's another good stop. Noah Bottic made his debut last weekend as his Rojas again. Rojas still going. And it's another let off. Rojas, we're starting to see more and more of the ball, Rojas. Getting down to the byline, he's done it brilliantly. Back post, but Lupe is there, and it's saved by Jamie Young. Moving forward again, Davidson. The cut back towards Brimmer. Gary, oh, what a save! How about that from Jamie Young? Economides, Davidson again on the charge, drives it in near post. Kayla, a second half that was full of action and you'd say if it wasn't for their goalkeeper in the second half, we probably could have had two or three more goals. Absolutely, but I can say it was a great day for the centre-backs, so I've got to be a little bit happy about that. An important point, no <laughs> doubt. Well, it was a moment that almost overshadowed the contest last night. It was Lee Broxham's 350th A-League men's match as he celebrated the milestone in front of friends family and the victory faithful. Kayla, it was a pretty heart-touching moment, wasn't it? Seeing Absolutely. All? Getting to game 350, that is so monumental. So I think everyone was just really happy and just there was a lot of respect going out there towards him as well. It was beautiful to see. And there were plenty of those special moments along the way in that journey. Let's take a look at some of those as we celebrate all things Lee Broxham and some of the special people in Lee's career along the way. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Uh, no doubt you've uh, had some great memories and shared some great memories with many people uh, over that period of time. 
uh, and one day you'll be able to look back uh, with a great deal of pride, not only for yourself, but uh, the way you've represented yourself on behalf of your family uh, and the football club uh, is certainly astonishing, mate. Hey, Brox, congrats on the 350th, mate. Outstanding achievement and a, and a huge reward for all your hard work over the years. Congratulations, Lee. Um, I feel like I've done this a, a thousand times. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I've done it every season since I've been here. You continue to break records and you know what? You continue to get better every season since I've been here, mate. So um, it's, it's, it's an amazing achievement in itself. Being able to share the dressing room with you for the last sort of five and a half years has been um, you know, an awesome experience and um, you know, I grew up watching you play and um, to be able to share the pitch with you now is, um, you know, is awesome and um, to get to know you as a person as well, mate, it's been fantastic. Broxy, congratulations on 350 games. It's a massive, massive achievement and I feel very privileged to have been able to share the field with you on a few of those occasions. Um, your professionalism and your work ethic uh, says a lot about your character and what it means to play for Melbourne Victory. It's been great uh, to have worked alongside you for so many years and see you become the person that you are and always there for, for everybody. Feels like yesterday we both walked through the doors here, um, joining in on our first training session as the A-League started. And who would have thought 17 years on, you're still here, mate. You know, I've known you for a long time since we were uh, two young punks kicking around knocks. Um, so it's, it's been a pleasure being on this journey with you, mate. Hope the boys can uh, dig deep for you tonight and, and get three points and uh, get the victory up and going and uh, enjoy every moment, mate. Hopefully we can get to 400 soon and we can join a few big guns from a few other codes, mate. Um, all the best and uh, I'll see you soon. Absolutely heart-touching, as we've just seen there. He's an incredible footballer, but he's an even better bloke, Kayla, and I don't think we'll ever see anyone quite like Lee in the A-League again. I don't know if there's anyone in the A-League whose body, whose mind can stay that fit and healthy to get, three, get through 350 games, <laughs> so I'd have to agree. The Australian Iniesta. <laughs> well, as you all know, you're tuning in to Victory TV a little earlier today with the Socceroos kicking off at 8.10pm on Channel 10. And, of course, we have two of our very own there in Nick D'Agostino and Ben Falami. And before Ben was called up to Sydney for the contest, he joined Ivan Culliver on the couch to solve an absolute doozy of a wordle set out for them by our admin team. Thank you. Four goes three. I was there. Uh, you have to help me out here, but I can't help the way Sport Sport related? Yeah. This is a sport related thing. Okay. So, I feel like we should know it. Try pools. P O O L. Yeah, P O O L S. Sport related. Did you say football related or sport related? Yeah. You both got them. I spot them. We both have them. Boots. Oh. <laughs> Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was easy. That was, easy. <laughs> that was good. Well, credit where credit is due, Kayla, but I feel like the admin team might have helped them there. They definitely tried to give them the easiest word possible, but I do have to tell you a small story where I got the wordle on my first try two days ago with the word there, swear. Wow, I did. that's questionable. <laughs> I feel like, as, I Pab, as Pab would say, the man behind Victory TV, Prince Green, or it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a final series it has been for the girls as we prepare to defend our championship on Sunday afternoon against Sydney FC. Kayla, it's been great viewing, seeing the girls impress at the back end of the season. The girls have fully found their stride coming into the back end. We're going guns a blazing into the final series, and we've played our probably our best two games, the last two games. So hopefully we can keep that rolling. Jeff did call this on the show a couple of weeks ago as well. So it's all coming true. Yeah, absolutely. It is just our thing from last year to now. Hopefully we can just do the repeat. We love it. Well, let's look at last Sunday's Melbourne Derby prelim final win as the girls made it look easy to make the grand final. They've got it wide. It was Amy Jackson driving through and that's a fantastic pass for Chidiak. Oh, and she had Zimmerman. Up in support, she didn't use her, the flag stayed down. And here's another turnover, Chidiak caught in possession. Molina Rares across the face of goal. And this time, there is no letter. 
off. Victory on the half hour. They deserve to be in front. They are in front. And it's Melina Ayres with her second in two games. Ayres has won it back again. Here's Privatelli. Zimmerman at the back post. And she has missed an absolute sitter at the back post. Nevin to take. It's a good ball in at the back post. And they've got their goal. And it's Claudia Bunge. The New Zealand international defender. It's another goal from a corner for Melbourne victory. Sitting back on the edge of the area, Chidiak again. Chidiak still going, finding space, cross back in for Zimmerman, it's missed. Ayres is there, and so is Privatelli. And it's no longer just a mountain they need to climb. Melbourne victory are well and truly on their way. As McKenna delivers, and it's in. Tori Tumor gets finished here at Amy Park in the preliminary final. Melbourne City one, Melbourne victory three. Incredible performance from the girls. Kayla, did you see that coming? Ah, uh, duh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I get to see them at training every day. I've been watching their performances. I just knew the big win was coming. And I've got a good feeling about this weekend as well. So do I. Well, one of the catalysts in this final series has been the return of prolific striker Melina Ayres as we had a chat to her at training earlier today. Melina, welcome to Victory TV. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Um, first off, big grand final week. It's a bit of deja vu for everyone, uh, the way this week has gone. Yeah, I suppose it has been. It's, uh, I guess, similar run into, into the final, but um, yeah, I guess it's been a totally different season. Um, probably didn't play as well in the last five games as we would have wanted to, but yeah, I guess we're kind of peaking at the right time. Um, talk about last week, I suppose. There was a lot of determination uh, to get the job done last week, it could have been almost over at half time if um, if things didn't go or if things went the way we'd want them to go. Um, what? Why do you think the girls came out so firing? In the um, I think we carried a lot of momentum from Adelaide. Um, I think that was a really tough away win, um, and yeah, carried the momentum. And it's a home derby, well, home derby um, in front of you know friends and family. Um, and I think we knew we had it in us and we just wanted a, wanted a bit of revenge from the last time we played them. This week, huge game, Sydney FC. We, we know how the last game went um, and I suppose it was that big second half. But it's a different proposition this week, different players, different, um, a whole range of different things. Uh, are you confident about this week? Yeah, I think again we've got another week of momentum under our belt and for me I've got another 90 minutes that I wouldn't have had in my legs last week. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a massive game, Sydney and Sydney. Um, but, yeah, everyone's super excited. And, yeah, because of the momentum, I think we'll uh, go up there and, yeah, give it our best shot. This week's preparations as well, has it, is it giving you memories of last season? Is it, you know, the way things have gone? Is, uh, uh, you know, the way we're preparing, the way we're doing things, is it sort of giving you that sort of... Um, Sort of. I, it's it's just been a totally different year um, for me personally and the team, I guess. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of sort of flashbacks to last year and comparisons, I guess, are being made. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a totally different game. And um, yeah, hopefully we can put them away a bit earlier. She's a clutch player and she's back in the team at a clutch time for the girls. I'm sure you've had to defend against her in training before, Kayla. What do you think makes her one of the best in the league? She is an absolute nuisance to defend at training. She's constantly moving, she's defending from the front, and she's shooting from everywhere. So she's really the triple threat when it comes to the attackers, someone you want on your team, not someone you want to go against. I'm tipping a goal for it this weekend. <laughs> well, we'll head into the analysis bunker with Sistema to look at Molina's late season influence, and there's no doubt that Sydney Defence will have to keep an eye out on Sunday. There's no doubt about that, Jake. And her first goal against Adelaide is a prime example. Molina's run here is from a bit of a hold-up play on the halfway line as she streams into the box and finds the pinpoint cross from Leah. 
And here, it doesn't take much for her to have a sniff on goal, as like I said, she reads the poor pass from the defender to head into the box and finish into the opposite corner. And it's not only her goal scoring they'll need to be aware of. Her layoff here to Leah shows how her decision making in the final third is one of the best in the league, and that's why we're so lucky to have her on our team. And her numbers speak for themselves. Two goals, one assist, and five key passes during her three matches so far. So it's been an impressive late season cameo. So thank you to Systema for taking us into the analysis bunker. Well, Kayla, I'd say before we did this show, you weren't too camera shy, were you? <laughs> I've done my fair share of stuff on camera. I just think it's where I feel most comfortable. I think so too. <laughs> well, the girls are back to tell us who they think might not be as good in front of the camera. So let's take a look. Me? Nah. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I think we're all actually right. Yeah, Zim would be a bit awkward maybe. Um, well I watched Courtney Nevins. I'm gonna say Courtney. <laughs> she struggled. <laughs> maybe Polly. <laughs> Maya Markovsky. <laughs> I'd like to see Murph do an interview one of these days. <laughs> um, Murphy. Murph. <laughs> I've done an interview with Courtney and she was horrible. So I'll say her. Actually, Zim's also gets really nervous, so maybe she's in that category as well. Real noises, like during training, like she's really giving it her best. Maisel, silly stuff, Maya, because some of the stuff that comes out of her mouth. Maisel's. Oh! 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 oh. Maisel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maisels. <laughs> Polly Dorham. Oh, Maisels, for sure! Ah, ah, ah. Maya. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Maya Markovsky. <laughs> Well, Kayla, some uh, funny noises there. I've never heard such things in training before, but also Zim did almost give away a secret play here, so she's questionable on the interview. I think now, looking back, that happened before our Victory TV interview with her, but I would 100% say she is the worst interviewer. <laughs> oh, sorry, Zim, for that. <laughs> well, one person who didn't shy away from the camera during her time at the club was one of the absolute legends and pioneers of the women's program at Victory. She was a Turkish international and a 2014 women's championship winner. The Victory Faithful will remember her as Julgen Kodja and Julgen Janet Saris joins us today. G, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Now, the women's program is something very close to your heart, I know. How excited are you for what's happening at the moment? Oh, it's amazing. Just back-to-back -back finals for the girls. It's something that I always wish that I'd experienced, but um, there's many girls that I've played with and played against, so really proud um, of them and what Jeff and the girls have produced this season. I feel like I know you well, but I want to know your Victory story, and I'm sure that fans who are watching do as well. How did you get started with Victory back in 2010? Um, I was always actually a Victory supporter. So I was um, there, you know, every every weekend, every week, I'd have to pester my parents to let me come to the game with my friends. Um, one of the grand finals, I'm pretty sure we like got t-shirts and got like Go Victory painted and painted our faces and stuff. So when um, Victory finally had a women's team, it was something that I was really passionate about being involved in. Unfortunately, it wasn't good enough to make the season the first year and it took me a little while uh, to actually get into the starting lineup when I did finally get signed. But it's something I've been proud of um, being a part of and I work at the club as well. So it's kind of all ticking all the boxes of all my dreams coming true being a part of Mount Victory. That is really unbelievable and it is definitely a really cool story. You've been here for quite a while and even from your first season to now, how have you seen things change within the team, within the club? Yeah, it's been um, amazing that just, I guess, the, the pay scale, um, being able to treat it more closer to a professional um, profession, to be able to start living off rather than worry about working part time or having another job. So um, in that aspect, the girls are actually getting some recognition, which is amazing. Um, the quality of coaches like Jeff coming in, he's an amazing coach and I've had the privilege of working with him in the office as well as um, being coached by him. So just the quality of also players that we've had coming in from um, interstate, our homegrown young girls, and even, um, yeah, just the quality of football we're producing is amazing. 
You mentioned Jeff, and we all know Jeff's theory that, you know, you come back a better soccer player after you've had a baby. Is there any hope we're going to see you back in the women's side? Um, how much is he willing to pay me? <laughs> <laughs> Contract no. negotiations yeah. on Victory TV. Um, awesome. Look, well, um, there's probably a higher chance that my bubs will play for Victory before <laughs> I come back. So um, just wanting to focus on family now, football's. Still a big part of my life, but it's kind of taken a backseat at the moment to focus on um, my family and my loved ones. Well, you mentioned your family and your bub. You're now retired from football. You've got another one on the way too. Yes. Can you tell us how you're still involved with the club at Melbourne Victory? Yeah. So um, uh, even when I was playing uh, at Victory, I was working full time. So I had the amazing life of working and playing football. So I... Um, have come back in a part-time role to be able to balance um, having a child and the club's been great in regards to allowing me to have the time with my family and be able to work. So I went from, um, I've had many different kind of hats in the community department, but now just more of an administrative role in the community department um, and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's been great. Like I said, the club has been fantastic. Um, Brooke and Steve, my managers, have been amazing in regards to allowing me to do, um, have a family and work in football. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming in. We know it's a busy time for you. The baby's <laughs> due soon, but we appreciate it. No, it's great to be here. I've been watching you guys, so um, really <laughs> nice to have the opportunity to see you face to face. <laughs> thank you very much. How good is G? <laughs> hey, one of the pioneers of the women's game. It's great we can celebrate both men's and women's at this club, isn't it? It is amazing. And, you know, even from the day I stepped foot in Australia, I already knew who she was. Great centre back, good defender at victory. Um, so it's awesome to be here and be able to interview her. Oh, we love it. Well, if this week couldn't have gotten any bigger, we had the opportunity to announce the winning design of our Canva Design, our Away Kit competition, and Jason Davidson had the pleasure to call the winner this week to tell him the news. Let's take a look. Hi, Anthony. Hey, Jason. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, too bad, man. Just wanted to give you a quick call. see your face. Yeah, surprised. Yeah, I heard uh, heard you got a fan and just wanted to, to say that congratulations uh, that your jersey was picked as the winner for next year's uh, away kit. Awesome, thanks, uh, Amazing. And um, had a look at it. The boys are all happy as well. A lot of the boys picked that. How would you come up with it? Um, well, basically, I just know that a lot of the fans want the fluoro. Uh, they wanted that back. Um, and then I just wanted to put some little spin on it, so I just wanted to put a bit of a pattern in the V as well. Uh, I just got the pattern of Amy Parker. Yeah, so it all was put together nicely. Um, yeah, I love it as well. So look forward to, oh, to wearing it uh, next season. Just want to say thank you for your support. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing uh, design. Well, the votes were pretty resounding. The 2012-2013 throwback design was the standout winner here as we take a closer look at the kit. And Kayla, hopefully you'll be looking forward to wearing this kit next season. I am just looking forward to being on the field next year. I will wear brown and purple, whatever anyone wants, as long as I can be on the field. And I do have one bone to pick with you because I did say this should be our way kit and you laughed at my neon green. But... I actually don't recall that. So... <laughs> Shall we move along? <laughs> well, that's it for another episode of Victory TV presented by Canva. It's a massive Sunday of Melbourne victory action as Jeff Hopkins' women's side look to make history and take out the club's first back-to-back -back championships as we face Sydney FC at Netstrata Jubilee Stadium at 4.05pm. You can catch all the action on 10 Bold and Paramount+. Plus. Then the football continues over at Amy Park as we face Western Sydney Wanderers at 7.05pm. So don't forget to get your tickets via Ticketek for the important fixture upcoming. And again, it's another jam-packed April for the club with plenty of travel for the boys. But the fixture that catches our eye here is our first Amy Park A-League men's home Melbourne derby on April 9th. That is a contest you cannot miss. And finally, make sure you tune in to Victory TV presented by Canva next Thursday as we look at the week that was at Victory. Kayla, it's been a pleasure once again. Uh, it just feels right back at home to be standing here next to you. <laughs> Thursday night, our favourite night <laughs> of the week, as night. you say. Well, from myself, Jake Barkadesh and Kayla Morrison, it's good night. See ya.